every senior developer should know some evergreen testing principles because when you know them, you're going to potentially get a higher salary after nailing your next job interview and you're going to ship a lot less bucks which will save your company money and will also increase your happiness because when you ship less bucks, then you will get to work on more features which is always more fun. So if you Google evergreen testing principles, you might come across the article Testing Desiderata by Kent Beck. And there's also a video series by him and Kelly Sutton. But the problem is all of the examples in their video series are in Ruby. So this video is going to show you 12 properties that your test should have with examples in JavaScript. If you want to code along, which I highly recommend so that you can learn the most, create a new Node.js project and install Writeway and Tap Nirvana and Jest. Before we jump into the properties, there are three things that you need to know. First of all, Test Desiderata derives from the Latin word for things desired, which means all of these properties are trade-offs. Not all of your tests need them. Second of all, I'm Jan, I'm the CTO of React Squad, and if you need to hire senior React developers, click the link below the video now. And third of all, all of the examples are going to be using Writeway. Writeway was invented by Eric Elliott, and it's genius because it only exposes an API to you that allows you to write good tests. You cannot write any bad tests with it. Obviously, Jest and Vitest are more popular, but Writeway is a perfect library for beginners to really learn how to write good tests, and then later you can use Jest and Vitest. With that being said, let's jump into the first example, which is all of your tests should be sensitive to the behavior of your code. Start by importing describe from Writeway and define a function calculate sf, which calculates the wage for people living in San Francisco, and a second function called calculate, which calculates the wage anywhere else. Then we're going to start writing the test. First, you're going to create a describe block for the calculate function. Define the hours per week that are being worked and then you write your first test that makes sure that given a certain amount of hours, the person receives the proper wage. Then define a second test that makes sure that if you're living in San Francisco, you always get the minimum wage. Then define a third test that makes sure that if you're living in San Francisco but making more than minimum wage, you're getting the proper salary. If we run those tests, you can see that they're all passing. But if we now modify the behavior of our implementation, the test should fail, which is exactly what the first principle states. Your test should also be insensitive to the structure of your code. Writeway makes it impossible to write structure-sensitive tests because it doesn't expose any API to mock functions. So for this example, we're going to use Jest and we're going to use its spy-on method. So to have something to spy on, you need to now create a new object called the hourly wage calculator. The functions that you defined earlier are now going to be methods on the hourly wage calculator object. And as you can see, the calculate function is going to use the calculate sf function under the hood. Then write the two tests for the minimum wage for San Francisco again, but this time only check if calculate sf has been called or not. Now your tests are passing. But you made the assumption that calculate sf exists and that the calculate function is using it under the hood. If you change your code so that you inline the calculation for the San Francisco area code, your tests are going to break. And that is what is meant when you say your test should be insensitive to the structure of your code, right? If you change the implementation, but your code still does the same thing, your test should still pass. Ken C. Dots calls this avoid testing implementation details. The next principle is that your tests should be readable. Ken Beck says that tests like code are read more than they are written. Some things that reduce the lines of code that you're writing actually make your tests less readable. You might see that most people, by default, work a 40-hour work week. So you decide to abstract that away in your tests into a separate variable. But drying up your code often makes it less readable. So you want to avoid writing tests that are just a few lines of code, but they are scattered all throughout your file. So you have to scroll a lot to even comprehend the test. Kent Beck says, you're not supposed to repeat yourself unless you're supposed to repeat yourself. Your tests should be self-contained and therefore it is okay for them to be verbose. Your reader must be able to understand what is going on in your test and they should be able to extract the motivation why that test was written. There are exceptions where it's okay to generalize your test setup and we're going to look into them now because the next principle is that your tests should be easy to write. If your tests are hard to write, that means that either your code has a bad API, your code is too tightly coupled or you are lacking the proper setup functions for your tests. Write the calculate function again, but this time it is taking in an employee object. You're also going to create a create employee factory function that creates the employee object and populates it with default values. Next, create a test that calculates the salary for Kent Beck, then create a test that calculates the salary for Kelly Suit. 
In these tests, first name, last name and address are all irrelevant for the calculate function. It's the fault of the system that your tests are expensive to write relative to the code under test. If you need to write multiple lines of code or even hundreds of lines of code just to test a few lines of code, then that's a design problem, not a test problem. For example, your tests might be too tightly coupled or have too many side effects, which will cause for you to write lots of mocks to even be able to write your tests. If you're unable to test it, you designed it wrong. Can't back. Your tests should run quickly. On average, it takes your brain 23 minutes to refocus on a task after you got distracted. And those distractions can happen within seconds. Good tests help you stay in flow because they run fast. Create a function const delay that takes an amount of seconds and then returns a promise that results after that many seconds have passed. Then add this delay function between each assert in your test. Now run your tests again and see how you feel. Watch how your mind slowly drifts off because your tests take so long to run. Your unit tests should run in under 10 seconds and you want to aim for having them to be able to run in less than one second. And all of your functional tests and your CICD pipeline should run in less than 10 minutes. Your tests should be automated. That means you want to avoid having QA engineers manually check your new release for regressions. Instead, machines should do the testing. In the beginning, it might be tempting to skip out on tests, but as your app grows, not writing tests causes compounding debt. There are four reasons for why machines are better than humans at testing. First, as your app grows, it gets harder to add tests. Manually clicking through a program slow takes longer than a machine clicking through it. Machines have better memory than humans. Once a test is written, the machine never forgets the test case and prevents regressions. You pay a computer less power than an engineer and while your CI-CD pipeline runs, you can already work on new features. Automated tests guarantee program correctness if your tests are good. Your tests should also be isolated. That means that your tests should be able to run in any order and in parallel. Whether one test passes should not influence whether another test passes or not. And to achieve this, your state needs to be the same before and after each test. That is called the Boy Scout rule, which means that leave your tests like you found them. Create a variable called number of calculations and use that in your calculate function to code up an example that violates the isolated principle. Now write two tests, both testing that your calculate function returns the correct salary. If you change the order of these tests, they both fail because they have a shared mutable state dependency with the number of calculations. In general, your tests should be isolated from any shared mutable state and also they should be isolated from the environment that they're running in. For example, the DOM, the database or the scope. If you must share some mutable state between tests, then you should restore the initial state after each test. The next principle is that your tests should be composable. The confidence provided by one test should combine with the confidence provided by other tests. Let's look at an example. Define three functions ink, double, and ink double, which is a composition of the former. Now you can write three tests, one for the ink function, one for the double function, and one for the ink double function. We ensure the correctness of ink and double and even ink double isolated in their own scope. Now, if you break either the ink or the double function, your ink double test will fail too. And if your code is sufficiently composable, then your tests will be composable like that too. And this pointing to the cause of the failure is the next principle, which is your test should be specific. If you break ink double, by changing the order in the function composition, your test points you to the failure. If you take a look at the stack trace provided by RightWay for your failing test, you see exactly which component broke. If you restore ink double and then break ink by having it add two to your number instead of one, two tests break. Using the stack trace, you can find the test that points you to the cause of both errors. In general, if you encounter multiple errors in your tests, then the leaves point you to the source of your error. Your tests should also be deterministic. That means that given the same code, they produce the same result. A few years ago, I was working on a project with a flaky test. Let's look at an example to show what you want to avoid. The flaky test was part of a test suite for a reducer in Redux. The get should token update selector contained a piece of code where a date was generated on each run of the selector. And the test, depending on how fast it would run, it would either fail if the date was new enough or pass if the date was old enough. 
You can make this test deterministic by making the selector a pure function and explicitly passing in both arguments for both of the dates that are compared by the selector. Your tests should not be flaky, but some testing frameworks such as Cypress or Playwright accommodate for flaky tests by introducing automated retry mechanisms. Your tests should be independent of any operating system, random number generations, times, dates, or even language settings. Your tests should also be predictive. That means that passing tests should give you confidence that you can deploy to production. If an error surfaces in the production environment, you can then write a test for it and then prevent it from ever happening again. 100% predictability can rarely be achieved in the real world. To maximize predictability, aim for 100% case coverage instead of 100% code coverage by using unit tests and integration tests. You can have 100% of your code covered by unit tests, but your application is still broken. But if you aim for 100% case coverage, you can usually be super confident that your app is not breaking and that your app is just running and working well in production. Lastly, tests should be inspiring. That means that your test should give you that feeling of confidence. It should make your team more productive. It should enable rewrites and code deletions. Good tests serve as documentation. They help you onboard new team members and they help you to understand code that someone else wrote. And by the way, that someone else might be your past you. They also help you to ship more often and they help you to relax by decreasing deployment risk and increasing deployment frequency. And finally, tests are a way to liberate energy, to move from worry to hope, creativity and empathy, to demonstrate trustworthiness. Passing tests should feel good. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you learned something.